Hi Jordan, this is Tim. I'm going to go through your trailer with you. We'll just start up here in the front and work our way around. It has one 12 volt battery in the front of the trailer. And then for your four point leveling system, the brain box for it is in the ceiling in the front compartment. Hopefully you'll never have to mess with that. does have the Lippert electronic leveling on it. Has an on and off button, an up and down, an inner button, retract, auto level, and you can manually go into the system and raise either jack that you want manually to level the trailer with. On the inside of this door here it should tell you how to use the ground control 3.0. It should go through step by steps of hooking up to the unit, unhooking the unit, leveling the trailer. Everything should be right here and there should be a disc inside the paperwork on the inside of the trailer. You do have two 30 pound propane cylinders that are full except for what we use to service the trailer. It does have the regulator in the upper right hand corner on the inside. The switch up on top indicates which bottle it's working off of. Right now we're working off the bottle on the opposite side. If you have both cylinders open, even though it's pointed to the one on the off door side, it will automatically pick up from this one over here as soon as that one over there would happen to run out. That way you don't lose your gas service in the middle of the night. Then all you have to do is put the lever up on top over to this side here, take the other bottle off and take it down and have it refilled. Your water system compartment is next and on the water system it does have a hookup light for hooking up at night time it also has a battery disconnect so that if you don't want the 12 volt appliances inside the trailer drawing from the battery you can turn it to the off position and pull the key out you also have a 110 outlet on the outside out here that is gfi protected by the outlet in the bathroom you do have an outside shower, it has hot and cold running water on it. Cable and satellite hookup on the left hand side. And there's five different figurements of how you can put water into the trailer. For dry camping, you'll use the top left hand one. For filling the tank, you'll use the bottom right hand one, or left hand one. City water in the middle, winterizing, and sanitation of the pump. All of those connections, you will go through the city water connect for that. Uh, filling it with water or antifreeze, you'll go through your winterization through the same setup. The black valve in the back is for your black tank flush. While you are dumping your holding tanks, once you have the black tank dumped, you can hook a water hose and regulator to the black tank flush. <coughs> And when you turn water pressure onto it, it will have a little aerator on the inside of the tank that sprays around. Helps clean out more of the debris out of the inside of the black tank only. You also have a gray tank one, which is gonna be your bathroom shower and sink water. And a gray tank two, which is gonna be your kitchen sink water only. On your gray tank two, it should also use your washer dryer through it. There is a hole in the bottom of the compartment <coughs> that you can bring your water hose and cable lines up through so you don't have to leave the outside compartment door open. Come right up through the bottom on it. <coughs> Next one back is the outside of the hot water heater. Hot water heater works two ways, 110 and propane. The 110 switch is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. Your gas switch is going to be on the inside on your monitor panel. Before you run either source of heat, you'll want to make the, pop the pop-off valve at the top to make sure that the tank's fully with water <coughs> before you turn on electric or gas. But it also has a drain rod down here in the bottom for draining the hot water heater. The drain rod is also an anode rod which draws all the impurities out of it to the rod, eats up the rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. But that is where you'll drain the hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing and in between trips. <coughs> the next one back is the outside of the furnace. It sucks cold air in the top, hot air at the bottom. 
I always suggest putting a mud diver screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact once it's been lit on propane mud divers love that smell they're going to go in there they're going to build their little dirt nest on the inside and it cuts your airflow down for your furnace cap hanging down <coughs> is where you'll hook your sewer hose to the two white lines right behind it the red side is the hot side of the water system the blue is the cold side of the water system that is the lowest water drain points in the trailer. You'll use those for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer. Since it has a refrigerator in the slide room, it does have to have vents on the back of it to vent it in and out. There is also a hole cut through the fender skirt here that will manually crank the front door side slide room in or out for any reason. It won't work on its own. It does have a manual way to crank it in and out. Lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 100 foot pounds. The tires are aired up for pressure, which is 90 pounds on the side of these cold. Fresh water drain is right behind the back axle. It is the white two inch valve. <coughs> and then the two blue lines right behind it is for when you are filling the fresh water tank, it will actually let air come out of the two blue lines while the tank is filling. Around the back here, it does also have your backup cameras installed up at the top, and it does have the two side marker cameras already installed. <coughs> it does have a receivable hitch on the back for a bicycle rack. It does have a ladder for going up and checking the roof. You check the roof every uh, 90 days. You don't have to seal the roof every 90 days, you just have to check it every 90 days. The quicker you can find a problem with the roof, the better off you are. It is the life of the camper. As we start around this side here, it does have a gas connection here in the back for an outside grill, fish fryer, or any LP components. The next one here on the side is the hole that will manually crank the slide room on the opposite side of the trailer in or out for any reason. It won't work on its own. It does have a manual way to crank the trailer in and out. Each one of them cranks the room on the opposite side, in or out. You do have a 110 outlet on the outside of the trailer. That is also GFI protected by the outlet in the bathroom. <coughs> you do have an awning for the slide room. And then you have your main awning up here in the front. In the front walkthrough compartment. <coughs> there is another 110 outlet and a place to hook up a TV. You also have satellite or cable to these hookups. The handle laying in the compartment is for the two slide rooms to manually crank them in or out. Your blue hose on the opposite side over there is for your outside shower. <coughs> Front compartment on this side is actually just for your other propane cylinder but you can also access any of the motors to manually crank them up or down through the top or the bottom of the motor itself it does have a rubber plug that you can take out using a socket and a wrench to crank them up or down to get them on or off the vehicle same way with your two back ones behind the axle they do have a manual way to crank them jacks up or down after the trailer's on the side, level from side to side, front to back. The next thing is the proper fit of the steps. It's not working right. Go ahead. When we open the door, the steps are going to be mounted to the inside in the up position. We'll pull the blue handle and we'll let the steps come out. As the steps are coming out, there is a mark on either side that you can push in on that will allow you to adjust the legs of the steps up or down. The main thing on this is it has to lay flush in the doorway. So we're going to push in on it. We're going to let it come all the way down. And 
now that this side's just a little bit off, we're going to pick up on it just a little bit and let that leg come back out. Clicks it into place. The main thing is it has to lay flush in the threshold. Now we're going to go up into the trailer. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side. And then we're going to run the two rooms out. On the monitoring system itself, it does have a battery life that shows you that the battery is fully charged. To get an accurate reading on the battery, have the 110 line unplugged. Fresh water tank showing you that it is empty. As it is filling on the outside water compartment, you can come here and push the button and actually watch it fill one third, two thirds full. Once it hits full, you can turn the water pressure off going to your water compartment. Black tank one is the toilet water. You do not have a black tank too. You have a galley tank, which is your kitchen sink water and your shower water, or washer dryer water. Gray tank two is your uh, bathroom sink and shower. Buttons off to the side here. The first one is for the gas side of the hot water heater. When you turn it on, the little red light comes on. In about a minute's time, that little red light's gonna go off. Then the hot water heater will go through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light on gas, that little red light is going to come back on. The second red button is the electric side of the hot water heater. You have to have the button on on the outside first and then the button on the inside on for it to have electric going to that hot water heater. Third red button is the water pump switch that turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The fourth red light is for tank heaters that are underneath the trailer. For when you're camping in wintertime, you can turn it on. It has a little heat pad underneath each one of the tanks that will keep the water from freezing. Black lights down below there. The first one turns the interior lights above us on. Second one turns the safety light on the front steps. <coughs> there is a light underneath the front steps and there is a light underneath the front slide room. Cap lights turns the two white strips on the front of the trailer on. And then the fourth one is the awning lights that turns the awning lights on underneath both awnings. On them awnings, we'll go with the slide room switches first. The first one runs the door side slide in or out. Second one runs your main slide on the off door side in or out. And then you have two awning switches to extend the awnings. The first button does the main awning on the trailer. The second awning button does the awning that is on the slide room itself. Once the awning's all the way out, skirt's hanging up and down. <coughs> it does have a pinch point on each one of the arms that you can pull down against and tighten up the black knob. That would put the pitch of the rain coming off of this corner here. You can do the same thing to the front arm, pull down on it, puts the pitch of the rain going off to that side. But before you roll the awnings back up, you have to loosen the black knobs and leave them loose. Same way on your back awning. There is a way to put a pinch point on each one of the arms. They do have LED lights up underneath each one of the awnings. <coughs> We'll go back to the inside of the trailer. The first light switch on the wall turns the two lights above the camp cabinet open. The second is your thermostat for your main AC in the living room. And when we turn it on, first thing it gives you is the fan speed. You can use the up and down button to change those. High, low, auto cool auto cool and high cool then you set your temperature for what you want the air conditioner to kick on at 
hit that mode button one more time and it says heat in the lower left hand corner dial your temperature up for it hit that mode button one more time and it should say off in the lower right hand corner fantastic fan that is above the stove has a on and off button to turn it on and off a vent up a vent down and an off fan button as we start down this side here it does have a light switch on the light above the table for turning it on and off each one of the chairs has storage underneath it. <coughs> Table solidly mounted to the floor. <coughs> Does have a 110 outlet behind the between the kitchen chairs and the recliners and a USB port for charging of cell phones. The two lights above the chairs have to be turned on by hand. A little push button in the center then turns them on and off. But you do also have a fire escape window behind the recliners. Since the couch could be made down into a bed area, you do have an escape window on the back of the unit too. You also have a 110 outlet on either side of the couch and a USB port on either side of the couch. <coughs> Little push button on the top of the light turns the lights above the couch on for reading. There is a remote for the TV, there is a remote for the stereo, and there is a remote for the fireplace. All those remotes should be in this drawer here. There's two sets of keys. The purple key does a front lock and deadbolt. The black key does your slam locks on the outside. And then the 751 key does your outside control panel for doing the jacks on the trailer. Little remote. Does the fireplace on and off. Well, I said it did. Maybe I'm not that one. There it goes. You can also change the flame setting. Up and down for the heat. Also has a timer button, so you can set it for one, two, One to eight hours of time before it shuts itself off. Does have Fahrenheit and Celsius. Middle size remote does the stereo. On the stereo you have inside and outside speakers. And then your bigger remote does the TV. TV should have got 29 channels this yesterday when they checked it. not too bad of a picture between the antenna on top of the trailer, the booster, and the TV. We'll go ahead and turn that off. All the rest of the paperwork that's in the trailer is in this top hand drawer by the stove. There is a 110 outlet on either side of the stove in the front. You do have a light for the stove top on the microwave and a fan. Fan has two speeds on it. Lights just has an on and off. On the glass stove top, it does fold up two times. Once and then the second time. Then it has a button on the right hand side that you can turn on <coughs> that lights up the knobs on the burners on top. All three burners on top can be lit with the striker on the left hand side and so can the oven. On the oven you have to turn it to pilot on position, hold down on the button and then use the striker on the left hand side. If you flip the button all the way down you also have a light in the oven. <coughs> Before you lay the glass stove top bag down, touch the burner grill 
to make sure that it's cold to the touch of the hand before you actually lay this back down on top of it. Does have pretty good size storage space underneath the sink or on either side for utensils. <coughs> Big drawer for pots and pans underneath. <coughs> also has a light above the stove for cooking. Push button. On the refrigerator itself, <coughs> it will tell you that it's in electric mode or the gas mode. The temperature is for the freezer at the top. Two drawers down at the bottom. Also has a travel lock for <coughs> the refrigerator during travel that will come off, goes between the four doors, holds the doors shut. In the front compartment, pantry, there is a pretty good size shelving in there that you can adjust on the right hand side, up or down, or use as a coat rack. <coughs> Timmy. <coughs> you do have a light on the countertop that turns the two lights above the sink on, a 110 outlet on either side of the sink, and a LP detector, carbon monoxide detector down at the bottom. <coughs> the air conditioner vents through the round vents in the ceiling. The heat vents through the, on this one there's one at the floor back here. And then you have the round vents of the steps as you're going up into it. You do have a two-way switch here that you can turn on the motion sensor or on 24-7. does have a working smoke detector above us. In the bathroom, it has a knob on the wall to turn the lights above us on, and it does have your GFI 110 outlet in here. On the toilet, it has a single foot flush on the right-hand side. It does have a locking mechanism for locking this shower door is in place for travel neural knob in the ceiling and a little black button that turns the fan on up in the bedroom area there is another light switch that turns the two lights above the end of the bed on <coughs> you do have a 110 outlet on either side of the bed and a usb port on either side of the bed The AC in the front bedroom is hand controlled. Does not have the heat option strip in it. It's just for air only. <coughs> and in the front compartment over here is where they've mounted the washer dryer combo. The washer dryer combo will drain through the galley tank itself too. Main thing on the washer dryer, you need to make sure it gets winterized when you're winterizing the trailer. Does have some storage up underneath the bed. Pretty good sized cabinet space above it. And the two lights above the head of the bed have to be turned on by hand. Little push button in the center. The two round vents in the ceiling are from the master air conditioner in the living room. The air conditioner is mounted in the bedroom vents out either end. That's basically about everything on your trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your cooperation.